Hey guys, what's up? Swim here with your annual meta report. Yeah, it's been a while since you've seen one of these, huh? Anyway, before we actually get to the, you know, meta tier list stuff, let's quickly break down patch notes and how they uh, really, like, shape the meta and will affect these decks. So, real quick, a bit of a rundown. Aurelian Soul gets nerfed to needing 25 plus total power instead of 20. This is actually a really big nerf for the most part. He actually, there will be so many situations where he was leveling before that he won't level now. Needing, I mean, so when you assume that the 10 from him is already going to be on the board, instead of needing 10 additional, he needs 15 additional, which is 50% more. It's actually going to be a lot harder to level up your ASOL. This is a pretty big nerf, and we will see less ASOLs because of it. Radiant Guardian loses one power. A pretty big nerf. Uh, we should still see a lot of Radiant Guardians in the meta. It's still going to be a pretty good card, but certainly less just like super dominant as something that just says no to aggro. Uh, aggro is going to be perfectly fun. Inspiring Mentor. This is, I think, going to be a pretty inconsequential change. I don't see this impacting the meta very much. Picks, same thing, pretty inconsequential. Jack the Winner goes down one health, and Petty Officer goes down one health. So these are two changes that basically make Bilgewater just a little bit weaker. Uh, for the most part, they're not going to see too much change in terms of their placement in decks. The decks that are running Petty Officer are still likely going to be running three Petty Officers. It's still going to be a very good card. The decks that are running Jack might run like, you know, one or two less Jacks, potentially. But for the most part, this is, think of it, this more as a nerf to Bilgewater than a nerf to these cards. There's still going to be a, uh, there's still going to be cards that like fill the roles and will stick around because of it. Next up, we've got Bastion. Uh, Bastion went from give an ally spell shield this round to grant an ally plus one, plus one in spell shield. This is absolutely crazy. This is like one of the biggest buffs we've seen in the history of Legends of Runeterra. This is phenomenally nuts. It is now not only a permanent spell shield, well, permanent time-wise, it still will go away as soon as it gets popped, but it doesn't time out at the end of the round anymore, and the plus one, plus one is also permanent. This is basically a straight-up Targon auto-include card all of a sudden, and a reason to run Targon in other decks. You can combine this with uh, Lee Sin and Zed is going to be the number one thing to combo with, but you can combine it with basically anything. You can combine it with, like, Lux, you can combine it with, like, Heimerdinger. You can run, like, basically whatever you want with this. This will make your deck a lot better if you're running Bastion with it. You can run with Fjord with this, you can run Tarek with this. Like, I, I wouldn't even really recommend Tarek. Like, uh, it's what you will go to, like, immediately, but for the most part, I don't think Tarek's still, like, a great champ with this, but you can run it with this. But Bastion makes almost anything good all of a sudden. Uh, Twisted Fate is another thing you can totally... Like, a Twisted Fate Targon deck with Bastion is perfectly fine. Anyway, that's Bastion. Absolutely bonkers change. Cosmic Inspiration gets a big nerf. Uh, this basically was refilling uh, the spell mana, and now it no longer does. So this effectively costs three more mana than it used to. This is a really good change because the old Cosmic Inspiration was a bit too much of a blowout in very, very common situations where you just kind of like snap grab it in attrition-based mirrors. Grandfather Rumul, um, I, I guess I can't really talk about I mean, this is still going to be a good card off of Invoke situationally. It's not a main deckable, right? So we don't really, you can't talk about like including this card or not. You'll still pick it off of Invokes in a lot of situations, but it's much less of a complete snap auto include. You'll now need to talk, you'll, you'll need to weigh, am I actually under pressure? Like, will I maybe die if I spend seven mana on this effect? right which is good grandfather rumel uh goes to basically buff two allies instead of one i do not see this card being super competitively viable still it's just a little too slow for you know the idea of wanting to control the mid game and get like control unit stats and stuff is not what you want on an eight mana card you know this this kind of identity would be much stronger on like a five or a six mana card for that timing so it's a little confused in its effect i still don't expect this being super good Hush uh, gets one additional mana cost per Hush you use. This is still going to be a very good card. Um, hush is still Hush. You'll still run it in basically every deck in every situation that you were running it before. But it'll definitely feel a little less uh, impactful when you're like double playing Hush. You have to play seven mana instead of six. Um, and they did mention that they're probably going to uh, change it further in the next update. Okay, Mountain Goat goes from one health to two. This is also an absolutely gigantic change because it means that in like Lee Sin deck, for example, anything that wants to spam gems, suddenly Mountain Goat's great cards run. Uh, having two health is the d difference between being a viable card or not, right? Having one health right now in this meta, especially with stuff like Make It Rain is a really big one, uh, just kind of like punishing everything that has one health. All the Shadow Isles pings are being ran, like most Shadow Isles decks are running like Vile Feast as well as Unspeakable Horror. 
So having two health is a gigantic break point. Mountain Goat goes from being basically unplayable to three of auto include in that style of like Lee Sin deck. Okay, and with that out of the way, now we can actually jump into the like meta tiering uh, and look at where things are at right now. So Lee Z combo is top of the charts. I think this is basically a tier zero deck. I'll show you my version in a second. Fiora Shen is doing very, very well. This is a great classic mid range, uh, great like anti aggro. Then we've got Pirate Burn aggro, which is like Gangplank Misfortune. Swain TF using a lot of the same cards, but slowing down quite a bit. And that's like topping out tier one. Then, we've got Leona Lux, Frosty Lee Sin, which is a Frostbite uh, sort of version of Lee Sin that we've been working on. We've got uh, good old, like, Scouts or MF Lucian. This is you running Lucian over Quinn, so if you want to distinguish that between Scouts, it's basically the same deck, though. And then we've got Ash Frostbite, which is doing very well, and a Twisted Fates Targon deck that I've been kind of like working on and cooking up. Now you'll notice something, which is that in this update, basically every Targon deck is using Bastion. There are a couple of exceptions, but even in decks like Nightfall Aggro, people are putting Bastion in. Like the new Bastion is absolutely nuts. So as always, we're going to be covering tier one and tier two decks. Uh, basically what this means is, you know, there are tier three decks I obviously mentioned on this tier list. I have been updating them, but I don't have enough time in this video to cover literally everything. We're just gonna take it from the top at the top of tier one, which is Zed Lee. Uh, this is the version of Zed Lee that I've arrived at after basically theory crafting with it uh, for several, several hours with Kuvira and Glop. And this is the version that we all like the most. Now, this is a, actually, it's a radically, radically different version of Lee Sin than I've been playing with before this uh, update, right? The Bastion change changed literally, literally everything about this deck right? I wasn't running Zenith Blade in my version before. I was a very, like, a defensive version. We were using stuff like Steel Tempest, and I wasn't trying to play super quick. I was not running Claws of the Dragon. Um, I obviously wasn't running Mountain Goat, um, and most of the cards you'll see in this version just weren't in that version at all. I think I was on zero Bastion. Um, I actually didn't really like versions that were running, like, one Bastion. It was an alright tech choice, but I found it, like, slightly suboptimal. In this new version, in this new version, this is, like, 20 cards different here's how this plays out do you guys remember my like zed standalone deck yeah it's kind of like that so there was a there was a point in time where like er, the zed deck the cool thing to do was to jam zed and standalone on turn three and just start basically sticking it in your opponent and we're doing that again with uh bastion in this case keep in mind this is the new bastion which is of course uh given ally plus one plus one and spell shield it basically just like it makes your zed literally unkillable it's actually really really stupid so, like, check this out. You know, you play Zed on turn three. Okay? I, I, I play Zed on turn three. My opponent Mystic shots it. I Bastion. They're completely screwed. They're completely screwed. They can't kill my Zed. They have a Mystic shot on the stack. My Zed is a 4-3 with Spell Shield. What do they do? They, they, during that action, it is basically no longer possible for them to kill my Zed. Unless they have two more Mystic shots. Unless they, like, triple Mystic shot. Because even if they have something like Gotcha or Get Excited, it's too late. Their Mystic Shot has already gone on. And even if they're, like, aware that Bastion is a thing, and if they're playing around it, if they're going to, like, Get Excited my Zed so that they can then maybe Mystic Shot it after I Bastion, then I just won't Bastion that Zed. I'll just let my Zed die to the Get Excited and laugh because you Get Excited in my Zed on turn three. So... I mean, yeah, basically, it's a it's a really dumb deck. This is, like, a much more aggressive version than we've seen other Lee Sin decks in the past. I think the best way to play Lee Sin before this update was the super slow version. I think Lee just wasn't in a hurry to end games, and the best way to play it was to not play for tempo. And instead, just kind of, like, slow play with denies, with concussive palms, you know, and not really care about rushing your opponent down. You'll notice something very interesting about this dust. We aren't running deny. It's crazy. I know it's crazy. It seems insane, right? Why aren't we running Deny? Well, Bastion does a lot of Deny's work, but the big thing is that we need to be able to beat Mirrors, right? Mirror is one of the harder matchups for this deck, and there's a lot of cards that just aren't very useful in the Mirror, right? There's a lot of cards, like for example, stuff like Concussive Palm, uh, we take out because, and, and I know that it's crazy because I love Concussive Palm, it's a really great card, but in this version of the deck, it no longer fits. A big reason is because we do need to avoid giving Bastion value in these kinds of decks, right? So we don't want to be targeting the opponent's stuff with stuff that they can just like neutralize with their own Bastion. 
it just makes us extremely vulnerable. A lot of people point out, you know, I, I saw some comments like swim, you know, Bastion doesn't counter everything. It doesn't do all of Denai's job because for example, you know, Denai counters War Mother's Call, and Bastion doesn't counter that. Or Denai counters the Harrowing, Bastion doesn't counter that. And that's not really true. The thing is, Bastion does counter those things because in those matchups, Bastion is what allows us to kill the opponent before those cards are a thing, right? Bastion is very aggressive because you, okay, the way those decks work, decks like War Mothers, decks like, you know, the Spooky Ash, they stall you through targeting your units, right? When I'm playing stuff like Zed and Bastion, they no longer have the ability to stall me without spamming chump blockers. And those decks have a really hard time properly spamming chump blockers. So against the decks that Denai is countering, Bastion counters those harder. Because I don't actually want to, to deny their harrowing. I'd like to, if possible, kill them before they even get a chance to play it. And what... Bastion means is their deck does no longer has a way to stop me from killing them, right? So Bastion does absolutely counter those like big late game spells in the same way Denai does. This is just not a deck that wants to be a super slow stall deck anymore. Anyway, we're running twin disciplines. Basically, it's just like very valuable to have combat tricks. It allows us to take certain blocks we wouldn't otherwise normally be able to. But also with Zed, we do value being able to buff Zed's attack a little bit in a lot of cases. Like when the opponent goes into block with a trundle and they troll chant, then I'll twin to keep to make sure my Zed wins that exchange and wins me the game um and yeah for the most part I think the ratioing is pretty self-explanatory here it is one of the more difficult decks to play I will be releasing a deck guide on this deck probably on this channel I think tomorrow it, you should be able to expect it because I'm planning on playing this deck on stream uh today if you're watching this video I might actually be live playing this deck on stream right now uh this is probably the most interesting deck to me and it's something i want to try to find i think it's pretty disgusting and i think that i mean i think but i think buffing bastion with the way they did was, <laughs> was a mistake i think this deck is really really gross anyway let's go ahead and move it along to fiora shen so a pretty standard version of fiora shen uh this is a pretty straightforward deck it is a deck that's actually been kind of in circulation for a little while uh and it's done really well in this metagame mostly off the back of just being able to have denies has been doing really well against a lot of like the war mother style decks going around um and of course this deck plays slowly it doesn't always have the ability to kill super fast you are going to get slowed down by these decks you know whose goal is to slow you down so you do do need the deny uh, unlike the other deck basically this is probably the most competitive Demacia deck right now uh, it plays out very very much like classic Demacia which is just kind of like mid-range combat trick big units right you're not necessarily playing as proactively with this one because you do have a lot of spells and a lot of combat tricks so banking some amount of mana is going to be good for you but for the most part your goal is to you know get a river shaper or a fiora going on three sometimes this deck will win off of the fiora kill four enemies win condition it is, you know, not often something you go out of your way for, but it's important if you're playing this deck um, well to recognize when you do need to consider it. Often on turn four, you're playing, you know, some weak unit while banking a good amount of mana or Shen if you have him. And then from there, you just like basically keep representing these like big units. Sometimes you have a very aggressive hand and you can blow people out with Genevieve Elmhart. And sometimes you need to play very defensive and just make sure you're maximizing value and not taking reckless attacks, right? So this is very much a deck, you know, it's classic mid range. It's got this balance of like sometimes you need to play very offensive, sometimes you need to play very defensive. It's a pretty straightforward deck, but because it has so many combat tricks, there's still a lot to think about uh, to keep you, you know, going. Okay, next up we've got Pirate Burn Aggro, and this is your typical Misfortune Gangplank. So this is a deck that's pretty great right now. Uh, this is the best, one of the best, statistically it's been the best way to play aggro in the current card pool. Now, one thing about aggro is I do think aggro is probably going to be a little bit worse off of this update. Now, here's why. I know that might sound weird, right? You know, metas, metas are very weird things. Why on earth would aggro be worse in this update? You know, there's stuff like, for example, Radiant Guardian gets nerfed. That's an anti-aggro card. It's a big aggro blowout. So why is aggro worse? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. Petty Officer going down to one health does actually hurt you. It makes you a lot more vulnerable to stuff like Withering Whale, which becomes like, it was kind of already almost always a, a one card blowout versus aggro. But beyond that, the change to Bastion actually speeds things up a lot. 
decks no longer have the ability to just like slowly stall out games like they used to there will be a lot of decks that will try to do that and end up kind of just getting destroyed by bastion not even necessarily bastion zed but bastion in actually a lot of forms like even decks that run bastion on stuff like twisted fate or stuff like Lo uh, lux is a common bastion target as well basically any every target deck has that anti-control component and that will allow them to go faster and the way to beat that is to accelerate your own game plan also lee sin which is one of the decks that aggro was trying to feed off of suddenly is looking very very anti-aggro right this deck is not really easy to run over because we have stuff like three mountain goat three claws and a bunch of early proactive plays so i do think that aggro is going to be coming down i'm still listing pirate burn as tier one just because that is a hunch on my part uh i'm that's a well i would like to say educated guess more than hunch that's the kind of pattern we see time and time again but it's something that you know we haven't seen the stats for yet i can't really prove it so until then i'm still going to be listing pirate burn aggro this is still one of the best ways to play the game it's still going to be uh your most efficient aggro just i'm going to run down your face with my misfortune and gangplank and you're going to run out of nexus health if you just want to end the game super fast and then lastly to round out tier one we've got swain tf which is Pretty classic Swain TF version. This is one that we are using with uh, Jack the Winner, which was Rattling Bones' addition to the deck. And it's doing very, very well. Uh, Swain TF is a little bit harder to play. It's actually quite a bit harder to play than Misfortune Gangplank, but you get very rewarded because, of course, it's a, it's a deck that can have a lot more flexibility, right? The biggest thing about this deck is, like other versions of Midrange, it is a deck that can play flexible for multiple speeds, right? Which is something that you just can't do with Misfortune gang pl uh, Gangplank, right? Whereas with Twist of Fate Swain, there's going to be a lot of games where you will play the aggressor. You're going to mulligan for cards like House Spider and cards like Petty Officer, and you will barrel them down with your wide board of units. Whereas there's going to be a lot of games where you do need to play more defensive and you're going to want to like play more for spells. Depending on the matchup, you might want, you know, different options. And it it ends up being one of the harder decks to play in the entire game. But because you always have an answer for whatever matchup you're against, it's one of the strongest. And that allows us to get into tier two. Here we've got Leona Lux. This is kind of like the new edition of Leona Lux after the changes. And we're running Bastion. The, again, the new Bastion is a really, really good card. Keep in mind, it's not really brickable because you can always use it as a combat trick. And it's a combat trick that you know is always going to get value later, right? So, like, even in an awkward situation where I've drawn, like, two Bastions, there's nothing stopping you from just using it proactively when something is engaging in combat on a relatively cheap unit, and you're they've got Spell Shield, so you know that Spell Shield is going to get value at some point later, right? Like, oftentimes you're going to be using it proactively on something like Leona, but it's a really, really big thing on stuff like Lux. The ability to just, like, save your card proactively from removal is absolutely gigantic and it's something that just makes fashion yeah i mean a, a crazy card it's like we were saying before right so this is one of the ways to use bastion in lux people are already using targon with lux the ability to just play lux on turn six and just start generating these final sparks is absolutely crazy uh yeah i mean what more is there to say it's it's leona lux right uh this is a pretty similar archetype to a lot of people were running like Lux Asol. I do think that, you know, so Leona Lux and Lux Asol have kind of been like, you know, batting uh, heads for a while, coming down to like, you know, do, do you play the over the top big 10 mana dragon or do you play the card that like helps you stabilize a little bit with uh, Leona? She helps you basically stun a couple of things, make sure you live longer. And I think that now that we have, you know, a couple of the changes off of this patch, in my opinion, the answer is easy. Asol got a little bit nerfed. Not only did Asol get nerfed, but the meta sped up a bit, right? Like I'm saying with Bastion, a lot of these like super slow decks do feel like they don't have as much of a stand anymore. And what that means is Bastion just wins on both fronts, right? Because not only is Bastion better in the Leona version than the Asol version, Asol is a little bit worse, the meta is speeding up a little bit. This is going to be what you're going to want to play if you're in Targon Demacia this update.
And uh, yeah, next up we actually have Frosty Leeson. This is actually a really interesting deck. I think this deck has a ton of potential. So the current version of this is just based on Glop's version of Leeson Trundle. Um, but I think as I play this deck more, I will probably make quite a few more tweaks to it as well. Basically, the idea of this deck is pretty simple. I mean, it's it's Leeson Freljord. We've seen Leeson Freljord before. We've seen a lot of like different versions of it. Freljord have all has all the good cheap spells like Entry, Troll Chant, Flash Freeze, and even stuff like Brittle Steel and Elixir. I feel like they're doing pretty well right now. You're going to be buffing your deck a lot with Starless Seer. Now, here's the catch with this deck. In this one, we run a couple of Trundles to help us stabilize on five, as well as just kind of like the one of Sejuani that I've actually grown to really like um, for failure decks, basically just making it a little bit harder for the opponent to play around it, and it's a great buff target when you get it off of, like, Starless Year. Sejuani is just a good value card in general. It's great when you play it on offense. It's great if you play it on defense. Just, like, that Frostbite and Vulnerable is just super versatile, and kind of always what you want in these, like, mid-to-late game scenarios. But the idea with this deck is, of course, you know, we have only a couple of units, so every time we're drawing something big off of, uh, you know, Starless Year being on the board, it's going to be buffed several times by Starless Year, right? We're running Entry as a 3 of, which means Starless Seer is often going to be buffing something that Entry pulls out. Entry actually draws the top card of your deck, uh, sorry, the top champion of your deck, which means it will very likely pull a big buffed unit, um, which is not actually the case for a lot of cards that say draw X. They actually say, they, they actually mean draw a random X. Entry draws the top champion of your deck, which is really important for how Starless Seer works. And this deck happens to be, uh, I think it should in theory be a pretty good counter to the like Zed Bastion version of Lee Sin. Now, that's not a matchup that's been like thoroughly vetted, but cards like Brittle Steel and cards like Troll Chant are absolutely gonna be what you're gonna want if you wanna take down the Zed Bastion version of the deck, right? Uh, overall, it's still a deck that I need to put more work into testing and I need to figure out if I want to like majorly change the version. Um, I would probably cut down, if anything, on some of the units, but it's a deck that actually has performed very well for having a, such a small sample size. And we've got MF Lucian. MF Lucian is kind of a classic. I do think that since the War Chefs change, um, a lot of people haven't really adapted quite yet to the War Chefs change. I do like the idea of running Lucian over Quinn as just like a two mana card, and actually getting out of the Demacia Allegiance Bannerman card, which I don't really like as much without, you know, uh, War Chefs and the ability to not really care about the early drop, right? When playing the deck out, a lot of times Bannerman can feel very win more. Um, it is still a matter of personal preference, like some people prefer the Bannerman version, some people prefer the non-Bannerman version, but right now in this current meta there's actually a pretty high amount of targeted removal, at the very least at higher ranks, and because of that I have personally favored slotting out the Bannerman, just because for the most part on turn 4 I want to be replenishing my board going even wider, which Island Navigator actually does pretty well. I actually quite like Island Navigator in this meta, because because there's a lot of uh, fairly slow strategies that she's able to punch down for huge value. And you know what? Ash Frostbite is actually a pretty good deck right now. This is a deck that has not been seeing play for quite some time, but I think it's very well positioned in the current meta. Right now, the meta is all about stuff like freezes. Freezes are amazing. Stuff like Troll Chant is absolutely incredible. Um, because they just counter pretty much everything that exists at a high level, right? Like, when you look at a deck like Fiora Shen, this deck is really powerful, but just gets hard stomped by freezes. Because, especially when you're going in for stuff like single combat, concerted strike, you really need to keep your units alive, you need to keep them striking, and freezes just shut you down so hard. Lee's Ed combo gets pounded by freezes. Freezes are kind of like the one way to actually reliably try to take this gargantuan deck down, and the best thing about Ash Frostbite is the way you have your freezes timed, it means they're not going to be weak against stuff like aggro decks that would normally uh, try to block out a lot of stuff like that. You'll always find uses for these cards in these matchups, right? Because, like, for example, when they're dropping, like, Gangplank on a 5, you can flash freeze that, save yourself health, right? You're, you're not going to find situations where you're just kind of, like, lacking an option entirely. In addition, Reckoning is pretty great. Uh, you can sometimes get off a Cheeky Reckoning against the, you know, Zed Lee Sin deck. You can do very good tricks against, like, aggro decks with the Reckoning. Um, and most of the decks that are running Deny aren't often going to either be able to keep Deny meta up for you, or they're not the kinds of decks that you want to be countering with Reckoning anyway. So this is a deck that is, it's been kind of, like, a, a bit low-key for the past, 
last month, month and a half or so. It used to be a lot more meta, but it's uh, it's been growing in terms of popularity recently. I think it's going to hit a spike after this update as well with its ability to just so uniquely shut down Zed stuff. It's just the biggest thing about decks like this is like we have such good access to pop spell shield, right? The new Bastion, everyone and their mom is going to be running it. So check this out. Icefield Archer and Sejuani. These units go through spell shield. They ignore spell shield entirely because these are not spells. They're not skills. They are play effects, right? They, a unit can have spell shield and I can play my Icefall Archer and it won't, it will just go through the spell shield. It won't affect it. It won't pop it. It'll just frostbite the enemy like it should, right? That's really powerful, especially when you have a unit like Zed, right? But in addition to that, if you want to pop the spell shield, you can. Cards like Troll Chant are super, super good. Troll Chant's probably the single best spell shield popper in the entire game. You're only losing half of your ability with Troll Chant. You still get the other half. You still get to plus your health on everything else. Oh, uh, sorry, on the unit you're casting it on, right? And you just delete their spell shield with half of the ability of a two mana card. Absolutely great. So I would say, <clears throat> if you wanna counter all these spell shield bastion decks, not just, you know, the Lee Zed combo, but any version people are gonna be experimenting with, Ash Frostbite is a great deck for you. Speaking of, you know, a degenerate bastion deck, we've got here Twisted Fate Targon. This is actually a deck that I've been uh, kind of like working on recently. I've been messing around with a lot of like Twisted Fate all in kind of nab packages. You might have seen the version. Um, I brought a version to the recent tournament I played in, which was running Ezreal instead. But now that Bastion is a powerhouse, I've been really eyeing this version and seeing if maybe it could be better than Ezreal. I don't know if it could be better than Ezreal in a tournament lineup, uh, actually, spoiler alert, it can't be because I'm not going to use my Targon region on this deck. But, but in something like a ladder deck, I think this easily has odds to overtake a deck like Ezreal. If you want to play an all-in Twisted Fate deck, this is probably the best version of that concept right now. By all-in Twisted Fate, I mean a deck that basically plays to try to flip Twisted Fate as often as possible. We have a ton of draw to help work with them. We are running three Pool Sharks. We're running the three Order Grifters, of course, with good Allegiance odds. We're running two Pilfered Goods and three Salvage. And of course, you know, Pale Cascade is a very cheap and efficient draw card as well. The best thing about this deck, the thing that's just most beautiful, if you've played a lot of Bilgewater, if you've played a lot of like TF, TF Ezreal type stuff, you'll know like, you know, it's so nice to be able to attack with TF. It's so nice. Because we have Targon, because we have Pale Cascade, and, you know, Bastion helps a bit, we can literally always attack with Twisted Fate. And they can never block him just because we have pale cascade in our deck right because he's got quick attack and there's just like there's almost nothing that will shut down you know the pale cascaded tf quick attack and because of that there's almost no ability to block a tf attacking which means i can trigger my plunders usually for free on these turns like you know when you're going for black market merchant pilfered goods usually this happens around turn five six seven i can just attack with my tf and that can trigger the plunder because the opponent is always going to be too scared to block and if they do block then i just punish them by pale cascading and my quick attack tf just eats their unit for free so pale cascade has just a gigantic amount of synergy with this whole bilge water package and bastion does as well of course now that bastion it's also a combat trick it's also getting plus one plus one on top of that spell shield for the tf means my tf is always going to be able to flip which is really 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 scary um in the tournament games i played i actually was so surprised how often Twisted Fate was literally winning me those matches. Like the flipped TF is something they couldn't really do anything about. Even if they kill him right after he flips, so like I'd often play a second one. It's just an incredibly powerful card that I think is actually extremely, extremely underrated right now. And a deck like this does a really, really good job of bringing out, you know, everything TF has to offer. Whereas like, when you look at TF in decks like Swain TF, it's a, it's a great deck, but you're not really trying to flip Twisted Fate in a deck like this, right? In this deck, we're using Twisted Fate for red card and gold card, and that's about it. I, it's not like you don't play blue, but you're not trying to flip the TF. Whereas, just with a little bit of help, if you go in for a little bit of value to try to level up the TF, you're going to be greatly, greatly rewarded. He's going to win you so many games on his own. All right, we're almost at the end of the Tier 2s. I've been trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter. I don't want them going on too long. Just breezing through them a little bit. We get That's a misclick. We get to Mind Splitter Control. So this is Kuvira's current version of Mind Splitter Control. And basically the idea... Oh, look, it's another Bastion deck. Bastion's really, really good right now, guys. Super, super good. Can't say it enough. And it's a deck that is basically... It's using a lot of different things. You can Bastion in a lot of different situations. You can Bastion your Trundle. That's 
really dumb. You can Bastion your Infinite Mind Splitters, which is going to be the most common target for this deck, probably after Trundle, which is like when you're playing on turn 8, Infinite Mind Splitter is an amazing card in any sort of slower decks that basically only gets hard countered by stuff like Vengeance, stuff like Will, and when I go into Bastion the Mind Splitter, well, that becomes basically impossible for the opponent to remove, and yeah, basically, they're completely stuck because I've stunned two of their units that they needed to win the game, and we can just kind of start stalling them out from there. Again, you'll also notice that this runs a lot of the best cards in the game right now. Cards like Troll Chant, cards like Flash Freeze. These do so well against the top decks that you're just always going to have extra win rate by running these cards. Like, you should be running Troll Chant and, and Flash Freeze in any for all your deck you're running right now, I would say. Like, I, I can't think of a for all your deck I wouldn't run these cards in, for sure. And then lastly, at the end of Tier 2... We've got War Mother's Ramp. So War Mother's is a pretty classic deck. This is the... Uh, it's pretty close to the version I brought for the tournament, but it's a ladder text version. It's not just like a full tournament version. Uh, we are running one Grasp and two Whales and two Flash Freeze. The version I was running in the tournament was going like full on with three Flash Freeze, and that's because of the specific environment we were expecting as well as our ban. This version is a little bit more light. I do think that War Mother's definitely falls off as a deck um, off of these changes it's still going to be pretty solid you know i ha i do have to list it in tier two it's a perfectly fine deck but overall you know i mean okay if you guys watch my tournament games you know i'm not a huge fan of this deck i definitely regretted bringing war mothers in that tournament overall still a solid deck it's not a deck i can really fault anyone for playing but it does get a little bit worse off of these changes because like i say the meta will be speeding up in a way that sometimes war mothers just won't be able to deal with there's going to be a lot of boards where there is a zed barreling at you with a bastion and it's been buffed and you're looking at your hand and you can't do anything to stop it and that's going to feel really really bad and um and yeah, that's it. That's that's the meta in a nutshell. This is, you know, like I say, a process. I try to not to let these go on too long, but this is a pretty good uh, picture of what you should be looking for right now if you're trying to climb. I would really caution you guys, as always, you know, don't try to play a deck that you don't want to play or that you're not comfortable on. At the end of the day, comfort matters more than anything else. So just pick, you know, wh whatever, you know, how many decks is this? Is this a total of 11 decks that I list as tier one or tier two? Whichever out of these 11 is, you know, most in your comfort zone uh unless you want to break out of your comfort zone which that is always good but just stick to what you are familiar with and don't feel like you have to go with a tier one deck over a tier two deck just because it's tier one you know that doesn't really matter at the end of the day the deck that you're more comfortable on and you're enjoying more is going to yield better results for you right anyway guys that's uh that's it for me uh if you're watching this on youtube right after it came out then i'm probably live on twitch right now streaming myself working on the lee sin z deck i uh, feel free to stop by and say hi at twitch.tv swimshim and if not that's all cool have a great day guys i'll see you guys tomorrow